Now, if you were on your way to work this morning, would you have welcomed the sight of a few more uniformed police officers around you? Perhaps you would have been reassured if you were on the bus or the train with a copper sat right next to you, or if the car that pulled up beside you at the lights had an officer at the wheel. Well, a political think tank has had a bright idea to increase the visible police presence on our streets. It won't involve a single extra officer having to be recruited or even an existing constable doing an additional shift. No, policy exchange says that officers should wear their uniforms to and from work. It's the the simplest idea you'll hear this year in an effort to make the public feel safer. It claims that introducing the measure in London alone would be the equivalent of putting 1,200 extra officers on the streets. However, the plan hasn't gone down well with the Police Federation, which represents rank and file officers in England and Wales. Its chairman, Paul McKeever, says that police officers would be at risk of reprisals if they emerged from their homes in uniform. Let us talk about this further with Godfrey Bloom, UKIP MEP for Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire, and also David Davis, who's Conservative MP for Monmouth and a special constable himself. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Godfrey Bloom, first of all, what do you think? Just just put them in uniform as they leave their house and they only take it off when they get back home again. Uh, I think it's an idea with plenty of merit, actually, yes. Um, We seem to have an almost invisible police force these days. I mean, we can go weeks without seeing one. Uh, And this is a a system of getting uh, uniformed officers back into the communities, back into the streets. And, uh, yeah, I think there's plenty of merit. It's a bit like David Davis, a vicar, who wears his dog collar seven days a week just to tell the community that he's there. Well, absolutely. Uh, I mean, policemen are on duty 24-7, uh, whether they're in their uniform or not. Okay. They are deputised by the community to police Let it. me go to David uh, Davis on that. They must so do. Well, first of all, um, police officers are police officers 24 hours a day. Um, m- many will carry warrant cards, and if they see something that uh, requires their attention, they will very often uh, stop and interfere. If somebody collapses um, or, um, uh, or they see violence breaking out, they will do something about it. I, I have done it myself, and I think every police officer probably has. But there are some practical problems with this. I mean, first of all, if you're on duty, you, you have to, your radio is the most important tool that you have. A lot of police officers in London, for example, might work in Reading, Swindon, even, even further away, I don't know. So what are they? Go- we, we, what are we going to do? We have to make sure that their radio is c- keyed into the uh, police force area that they're coming from. That's not technically that easy. OK, except it probably could be done. They're going to have to have their aspen and, uh, and spray, which is um, truncheon and, and gas, if you like, um, in, in, uh, in ordinary speak. That's not stuff that um, I think it's wise for people to be taking home uh, necessarily and, and, and storing in, um, in bathroom cabinets. Um, uh, certainly a, a police officer's spray has to be on their person at all times or locked up in a special locker. But we're, we're going to be saying that they should just, just take this home. Police Federation are quite right. The risk of reprisals or, or people just coming out and damaging and vandalising your car if but they if, see if, you getting if, out, if, um, you know, going off to If a, a burglar is going down the street, David, and they uh, they know that uh, there's one police officer in this street and he's at number 19, would they really burgle that house? The well, only one they wouldn't the, the, the go way for, the, sure. the way that burglars burglars don't think and plan in that in that fashion. Exactly. Um, and uh, I, I, I think if a police officer is at number 19 and sees a burglar running down the street, that's something that most police officers will uh, intervene with if they're, if they're able to do so. But if you are expecting people to be out, possibly without a radio that's keyed in, perhaps even without their truncheon and asp, I mean, I mean that's, that's just not fair. Well, I wouldn't do it. And, for... and basically, I mean, we're asking officers to do what could be an extra, uh, easily an hour a day, both sides, two hours a day work for free. God, God free guy. You're asking them to go out without their weapons. Look, I'm very disappointed at the modern police force. It's not often I disagree with Paul McKeever. He's a, he's a dear, dear friend, uh, and normally I support him. But on this, we've got to get back to the can-do spirit. And I think the problem that we have is that police have been undermined by politicians for years, sentencing policy, uh, and I think really they've lost their confidence. We don't want a police service. We want a police force. And I've watched the police uh, actually get worse and worse every year. Most people only see a policeman these days, ordinary middle England, if they're hiding behind a bush with a radar gun. They've got to get on uh, and, and grab the job by the throat. Well, I agree with a lot of that. Um, I totally agree with you about the sentencing policy, about undermining the police. I absolutely agree with you. But putting them out for an extra two hours a day isn't going to make any difference in their uniforms. They're still going to be undermined by the fact that career criminals are being let off with, with a smack on the wrist and that every time a police officer tries to intervene in a violent situation, they run the risk of being sued by human rights lawyers and with politicians... Uh, of many parties, I'm sad to say, jumping on the bandwagon. So that will continue to be a problem. And it's you're absolutely right, Jeffrey, we have to address that. 
But um, but you're asking officers to do an extra two hours of work for nothing um, without necessarily having the tools to back up the job, and, well, that, and that seems you, to be a bit why? unfair on the I piece. Don't, I don't understand, David, why that, that bothers you, though, the business of them, A, doing extra two hours of work for nothing, because, after all, you're, you, you're a Conservative, you're into that, that kind of efficiency, no, one would imagine. I'm not into ordering people to do two hours of extra work for, uh, <laughs> for nothing. I mean, but if they see a crime, they're supposed to make an arrest, they whatever will, they're they wearing. Will. If a police officer sees a crime, a serious crime, then they will make an arrest. But the problem is, if you come out with... Uh, I mean, come out with me in uniform, sir. Like, you find out I've had one person once came out with me and uh, turned himself in for murder, which was, uh, uh, which, which was quite uh, uh, an unusual one for a special council with BDT. Then nine times out of ten, if not... 99 times that after the building, of course. Uh, you know, any tell me where the nearest toilet is, there's a taxi we ran, uh, you know, I get to this station. That's fine, I'm, I'm more than happy to help if I need to that one there for, happily help you. But if you're going to and from work, you don't need to be um, stopping off to, to deal with uh, missing cats and, 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 and where the nearest toilet well, is. Well, that, that is quite a good argument, isn't it, Godfrey, that actually the more visible the police are, the more they get stopped and, and have their time wasted by, by people who should know better. No, I don't accept that at all. I think, there's a, I think, to be honest here, there's an avoidance of responsibility. I speak as an ex-soldier, and you wouldn't believe what the extra hours that we put in for no pay. Uh, believe me, and I think the police, uh, who are very well paid these days, uh, have to grab it by the throat. Now, the other day on the A11, there was a 10-mile tailback. There was a piece of shambolic traffic policing going on. It was a small broken-down pit, and I wrote to the chief constable, and he actually wrote to me and said, my prime responsibility is for the safety of my office. And I said to him, no, it isn't. It isn't. Your job is to keep the Queen's highway clear, to keep the Queen's peace, with due regard to the safety of your office. But that's not your missing statement. I think we have too many chief constables who don't actually understand what their job is. David Davis. Well, I, I think the, the prime responsibility is the safety of all involved. Now, I, you know, I can't comment on, um, on a road traffic accident somewhere, but, but I, I do think we need to be wary of looking for simple great sounding solutions that look good on paper which actually aren't going to work in practice and i just go back to this you will have uh, officers wandering um, home and leaving around um, spray and and gas if they're, if they're doing this problems over radios being keyed in um, properly you'll have um, officers who are on their way into work perhaps to raid a, a drugs den or do something important who suddenly can't do that because they've been stopped by a, a member of the public wanting to report a missing cat i mean you know it's a hypothetical example that sort of thing could easily happen um, and you're going to be asking people to work next to us. Jeffrey, you're an ex-soldier. I was in the TA. I have no active service, so I won't, I won't uh, dwell on it too much. But I do know um, that we were taught to march and drill and comport ourselves in a certain fashion, and I, I, and I, I carry that in my as well. But, you know, if you've worked a 10-hour shift, you don't want to be doing that. You want to, to, to get your face on the sit in the corner tube and bury yourself in the newspaper and not be on duty, which you effectively would be for an extra two hours a day. Okay, it would be like you. asking you to stand on duty at the House of Parliament outside for an extra two hours. Thank you very much indeed, David Davis, Conservative MP for Monmouth and a Special Constable, and Godfrey Bloom, who's UKIP MEP for Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire. It's Radio 2, it's the Jeremy Vine.